I now move on to uh, Ambassador of Mali, His Excellency Seko Khase. Uh, Excellency, uh, coming back to, you know, my, I, I traveled to Mali a couple of years ago and I found it a fascinating, very vibrant city, Bamako. Uh, also, I hear that uh, Mali became one of the first African country probably to hold some sort of parliamentary elections uh, after the pandemic erupted. Uh, my question to you uh, essentially is that if you could talk about, you know, uh, briefly about how Mali is handling uh, the, the pandemic. Also, you know, I have uh, uh, some questions from the panelists. I thought it would be a good opportunity to, to address this, a couple of questions, general questions, which is that how do you look at uh, the role of external powers, like, uh, you know, uh, external players like China and India, in addressing the crisis Bali and Africa is facing. Very briefly, you have seven minutes. I'll have to be ruthless now. We're really running out of time. Thanks. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, moderator. Uh, distinguished delegate, I would like to, to congratulate His Excellency uh, Shabab Shabab for his appointment and assure him my full cooperation. I would also like to express the it gratitude of the government of the Republic of Mali to the government of the Republic of India for his uh, invaluable support in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic in my country. Indeed, last week, the ambassador of the Republic of India in Mali, His Excellency Ajani Kumar, hands over first consignment of life-saving medicines to the Minister of Health and Social Affairs of the Republic of Mali. Honorable moderator, a lot have been said by the panelists, and I would like to focus quickly in three points. But first of all, I would like to echo the declaration made by His Excellency Shabar, and if it is possible to have his, uh, the text of his intervention. On the first point, India has been close to Africa at, from the beginning of the pandemic. I just mentioned the case of Mali. In addition of this uh, ad hoc medicine assistance, I think that India should more contribute in the implementation of the African response to the COVID-19, but also with African states. I also think that India could put its skill in the fields of medicine and new technology to help African countries to better fight the COVID-19, but also over pandemic like malaria, AIDS, Ebola. Finally, India could help African countries in building health infrastructure, ranging from large hospital to field hospital. And you, you understand that all these area of cooperation are set out in the guidance principles issued by the Honorable Prime Minister of India, His Excellency Narendra Modi. Now, it's time to put into action the various commitments made in the framework of India African partnership. My second point, I will say yes, India and Exim Bank should continue to play an important role in the post-pandemic economic recovery, but also in the construction of Africa. In close cooperation with African Union, at the, but also at the regional and bilateral level. I would like to take this opportunity the gratitude of my government to the government of India and to Exim Bank for supporting my country in the field of the development. However, I would like to launch an appeal to Exim Bank to grant specific treatment to the landlocked African countries, particularly landlocked countries which face terrorism. This country with fragile economy are struck by the lack of maritime facet and by the presence of terrorists on the territory and today by the COVID-19. 
Exim Bank could ask me what specific treatment we need. I will respond by lowering the current interest rate and any other measures that will help as unlocked countries to recover economically. Exim Bank can also help African countries in the area of the capacity building, particularly on the field of the presentation of development projects. Honorable moderator, my last point will be the issue of the reform of multilateralism. I would like here to express satisfaction and the support of the government of the Republic of Mali to the candidature of India as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council next year. I personally sat at the Council Security table when my country was non-permanent member in 2000-2001. I'm also a former ambassador Permanent representative. Yes, you cannot hear me. Hello, Excellency. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, I said what I'm also a former uh, ambassador to UN in uh, 2013 2016. And I wanted also to remind that since 2013, Mali has hosted the peacekeeping operation MINUSMA. So, for me to see friendly country like India, the Security Council is good news and an asset in the process of reforming the major organ of the United Nations system. India and Africa together can contribute to the democratization of the international system. Together, India and Africa can also play an important role in the process of reforming some major organ like the Security Council, like the Human Rights Council, and WHO. In this regard, I think that India and Africa could establish a framework for political consultation on the reform of the multilateralism. Framework can be set up with African Union, but also through bilateral political consultation. I also think that during the coming mandate of India at the Security Council, the delegation of India and the delegation of African countries, non-permanent member of the Security Council, must work hand in hand to address the issue of reform, but to, to work also to make the peacekeeping operation more effective in the term of the protection of civilians. I would like to stop here and thank you for your attention.